This uh, first section is on serviceability, and serviceability limit states are defined in Clause 3.4 of AN 1990 as those that concern the functionality of the structure or the structural members under normal use, the comfort of the people inside the structure, and the appearance of the structure. So, although excessive de uh, deflections don't normally lead to structural failure, they may impair the serviceability of the structure. For buildings, the primary concerns are horizontal and vertical deflections and vibrations, and checks against these must be made against unfactored permanent and variable actions. EN 1993 Part 11 Clause 721 states that the National Annex should be referred to when determining the maximum allowable vertical deflection. The following table is taken from ANA 223 Clause 721 Part 1b. So for a cantilever, the deflection limit is the length over 180. For beams carrying brittle finishes, the limit is the span over 360. For other beams, the limit is the span over 200. And for purlins and sheeting rails, the vertical deflection limit depends on the cladding. Clause 722 states that the national annex should be referred to when determining the maximum allowable horizontal deflection. So the following table is taken from NA 224 Clause 7221B. So, for the tops of columns in single story buildings, apart from portal frames, the deflection limit is the height over 300. For columns in portal frame buildings not supporting crane runways, the limit depends on the cladding. For each story of a building with more than one story, the limit is the height of the story over 300. And for purlins and sheeting rails, similarly to the vertical deflection limit, the horizontal deflection depends on the cladding. So now that you know the deflection limits, you need to work out the actual deflection of the beam. So here are a number of standard cases for different conditions and different types of loading. So for a sim simply supported beam with a point load at the centre, the deflection will be the unfactored load times the length cube divided by 48 times the Young's modulus times the second moment of area. So as I said, um, sorry, um, now that we've covered all of the theory then, I have an example from the Access Steel website to go through, and then I'm going to run through another example using Master Series software. So, as I said, this example is from the Access Steel website, so I'm quickly going to run through the sections relevant to this presentation. Um, we have a simply supported beam, and it's laterally unrestrained, but for the benefit of this lecture, we're going to assume it is restrained. And we'll just leave out the LTB tack. So, here they have a checklist, and they're going to classify the cross section, calculate the bending resistance, the shear resistance, and then they're going to check the deflection. So, here is a diagram of the beam and the loading arrangement. So it's simply supported and it has a UDL. And here are the parts of factors. So the ones I have talked about are gamma M0 and gamma 1. And they are both equal to 1 according to both the UK National Annex and the Eurocode. Eurocodes. Um, and just here's some basic data about the beam. And so the loading, um, at the bottom we can see that we're using S275 steel. So in this slide, um, we have some more section properties. So we're using a 356 times 171 times 51 beam in grade S275 steel. And there are some more section properties. And at the bottom, the permanent and variable loads have been worked out. So then, using the loads from the previous slide, the maximum bending moment and shear force can be worked out. So the maximum moment occurs at the mid-span, and it's 90.61 kN. And then the maximum shear force is at the supports, and that works out as 63.58 kN. Now this next part deals with the section classification. Um, so this bit's already been done as part of the bending example. So I'll just run through it. So the yield strength of the material is 275 newtons per millimeter squared, and then the section is class 1. The moment resistance of the section is 246.4 kN, and that's greater than the maximum design moment, therefore the moment resistance is okay. Now this next bit, bit deals with the shear resistance of this action, so here they've worked out the shear area, and you get that expression from the Eurocodes. So they've indicated on the right hand column that they're referring to clause 626 part 3, and that's where you get the expressions to work out the shear area. And for rolled ice actions, you need to make sure that it's greater than this condition, eta times hw times tw. So it is greater, 
and the shear area works out as 2865 millimetres squared. So now that we have the shear area, we can go on to work out the shear plastic uh, resistance. So we use this expression on its equation 618 in Euro code 3. We have already got the shear area, the yield strength and the partial factor gamma m naught is equal to 1. So just putting in those values then, we get a shear plastic resistance of 454.9 kN, and that is greater than the design shear force. So the shear res uh, plastic resistance then is okay. Um, below is a section about shear buckling, and we don't need to check for shear buckling if this condition is met. So here they've put in the values, and we can see that 44.86 is less than 60 is less than um, 66.24, therefore no shear buckling verification is required. So the section is okay for bending and shear. Then, just the last thing that we need to check then is the deflection. So here we need to use unfactored load, so the serviceability limit state combination is given at the top there, and we get 15.83 kN per meter. To work out the deflection, we use this equation, so 5 times unfactored load, times the length squared, um, sorry, the length to the power of 4, all over 384 times EI, so that works out as 7.3 millimeters. so that is the actual deflection. Then we need to compare this to the allowable deflection, so here the limit is the length over 780, and our actual deflection is well below that, therefore the beam is suitable against bending, shear, and, def and deflection and therefore it can be adopted. So this is the second example that I'll go through and I'm going to be using Master Series software, so we're using Master Frame. I've drawn out a 5 meter long beam and I've assigned some section properties to it, so it's a 553 times 165 times 66 UB in S275 steel. So we can go and put on the loading and here we have a permanent, so a dead load of 50 kN per meter and a variable live load of 20 kN uh, per meter on the beam. Um, so now I have set the end restraints, so it's simply supported. We can we can then go and analyze the beam. So here's a screenshot of the graphical results output that we get. And this is the shape of the bending moment diagram, so it tells us the maximum bending moment is at the shear centre, and that is 318.8 kN meters. Um, we can then also look at the shear force diagram, so here the maximum shear force occurs at the supports, and the maximum value is 255 kN. We can also check the deflection, and as expected, the maximum deflection will occur at the centre, and the value will be 11.3 mm. Um, we can then choose the steel design option from the design menu to get a more detailed analysis. So this is the screen that will come up, and we need to make sure that the Eurocode 3 design code option is checked. So we have this blue screen, and that's telling us that something's wrong. And if we look carefully, we can see that there's a warning for the lateral, lateral buckling check. Now for this example, we're assuming that the beam is going to be fully restrained. Therefore, we're going to have to say that the beam is fully restrained, and once we do that, the screen turns to white, and we know that the section we're using is okay. So here's just a close-up of the results screen, so we can see the loading at the top, the maximum values of the shear force bending moment and deflections are given in the table. The section is automatically class for us, so here it's class 1 section, the moment capacity is okay and the deflection is okay. So by using this software we can quickly determine if a beam is suitable or not. So now we've covered all of the sections required um, required then to design a beam to your code fee, so that covers bending shear, combined bending and shear, and serviceability. And um, remember that you can refer to the the handout and it covers all of the key points. Thank you for listening.